All right, guys. Welcome back to another one. We're looking at the Cervini's Cobra reproduction bumper. It's made of urethane. Now, it's not mounted at all. I just got it laying up there, guys. See? It's all completely loose, everything, and I gotta say, boy, Cervini's knocked it out of the park with this. It really fits nice. I know these things have been around for years, but, um... It, it, it really, really fits nice. Cervini's was nice enough to provide instructions, okay? And their instructions, I gotta say, are pretty spot on when it comes to preparing this bumper for paint, okay? I'm, I'm sure they've been down that road a million times and have seen it all and heard it all. Um, so I'll just give you a brief rundown and how to go about this, all right? The following painting procedures must be followed exactly for proper adhesion and to prevent fish eyes. Yes, guys. Um, you you got to realize this. This is not a part manufactured by, say, um, uh, a reproduction company for aftermarket bumper covers for your brand new lease car that's going to the dealership uh, for some smash repair. Okay? This isn't that. All right? These things are still kind of custom made. It's not primed. It comes bare urethane. And the biggest thing is this. If you understand, I, I don't know if this thing is injection molded or I, I don't know their exact process. Obviously, there's some type of mold, but we, we don't know. Um, the biggest thing when it comes to um, products like this is the fact that it has mold release wax on the surface when you get it, okay? You can actually feel it. All right, it's very, very waxy feeling. All right, you got to get that wax off there, guys, because if you don't get that wax off and you start prepping it first by taking a scotch pad to it or something like that, start sanding on it, deburring it, boy, oh boy, you're going to have a hell of a time. Okay, so it's going to come out like terrible. All right. And once you start sanding, you keep grinding that wax into the surface, and it just, you're doomed. It's, it's, forget about it at that point, all right? So the biggest number one thing you have to do is get that wax off, all right? All right, to remove mold release contaminants, clean the back of the part. Using two clean rags, saturate the first. Right with pressed plastic prep cleaner. You know, it's gonna be like a Prepsol product, guys. Uh, prep all, Prepsol, wax and grease remover. All right, and begin cleaning. All right, you take the second wag, the second rag to wipe them off, all right? Repeat step one. Rinse the part with water. I like, the, I like how they're saying Ajax, or you can use Sandfix with a red scuff pad. You know, 3M Scotch-Brite. You know, they're naming Good products here, guys, are naming the proper stuff that you would use if you were to go to a professional shop, all right? You're going to clean it. You're going to scrub it again. Um, use some plastic prep again, all right? Three to four coats of urethane primer with flex additive, all right? Um, now, when it comes to this, we're, we're going to get into a, a product specifically designed for these so we're not going to probably add any flex all right and then wet sand with 600 all right there you go guys 600 is the key number here all right uh, if you've watched the paint video that i've done i i use 600 all right some people go to eight some people go to 12 some people do whatever they do but even here savini's recommending 600 all right so it's a quick overlook on the instructions provided by Cervini's. Um, that's unusual. You know, normally, you know, you get stuff in a box and they just, here you go, have a nice day. All right, so um, now we have to go a little bit beyond just the prepping and scuffing, all right? This thing needs to be deburred, all right? Um, it's just part, it's the nature of the beast. It is what it is. Um, so we're gonna have to take a close look at it. But the, before we even do any deburring, we have to get that wax off. So the first thing we're going to do is clean it real good, get the wax off, and then we're going to start the deburring and smoothing process, okay? It's pretty basic. 
what, what we're doing, but just a couple of little tips just so um, things go as smooth as possible, okay? Lint-free prep towels. These are made, guys, for painters, all right? Automotive painters, marine paint, whatever, what have you, all right? They're lint-free. They're not like regular paper towels. I go through a, a lot of this stuff, guys. We always go back to the paint video. Now, I like to fold my towel so I can keep using, you know, nice, clean surfaces, all right? And we're going to take some acetone now. We're breaking out the big gun, all right? When it, in this type of scenario, this is the big gun here, guys, all right? Acetone is really strong solvent, way stronger than wax and grease remover, okay? So the one thing I will say is this, do not spray or pour directly the acetone onto the urethane, because it, it, the acetone is going to etch the surface when we wipe it, but acetone will start to melt the urethane. So just be careful with that, and let's get to cleaning. So because of the way the acetone will try to etch the surface, we're going to do this a couple of times, and notice, you know, I, I don't fold my rag this reason, you know, because, you know, I'm that OCD. I'm going to, you know, I'll show you why here. All right, so we're just going to get on this thing. Really, really good. I'm gonna say, okay, that's one little section. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna flip my rag. Okay, that, that part's no good no more. Come over here. this section. Both sides of this is no good no more. I'm going to take this, I'm going to flip it this way. I'm going to continue. it inside out, start all over again. Okay, now I've done totally the outside, right? I can feel a difference in how it feels right now. It doesn't have that waxy, greasy feeling to it. But we're not even close to being done. Okay? Because now, biggest, biggest, most important thing to do, we're going to do the inside. Because the inside, if it's contaminated, if you will get fish eyes just having that wax around. Okay? So I'm going to fold my towel one more time. I'm going to hit up the inside. It, I think it's an injection molded part. Um, just based on the, the way the inside is so clean and shiny and it's got that mold release agent. So I, I think it is an injection molded situation, which is good. We like that. So now that We've got the inside and the outside wiped down with acetone. You say 20 D's nuts, but so the fish eyes are no joke, guys. All right, we're gonna take another brand new towel. And we're gonna wipe the outside one more time, just to make sure. All right, now that we've wiped everything down with the acetone, I used a total of three rags. These rags are going straight in the trash, guys. All right, we don't use them for anything else. We don't use them absolutely for nothing else, okay? Those rags are straight up contaminated. 
Okay? So, there's a lot of consumable items that you go through when it comes to painting. Um, these prep towels are one of them. And when you use them, throw them in the garbage. Okay? Period. We're going to come in with this SPS prep solve. Prep Sol, wax and grease remover. Um, this products like this come in many different ways, many different brands. But just use a wax and grease remover, and, and you'll be good to go. Now you'll notice this stuff stays wet, it's not like acetone; it doesn't dissolve right away. All right. So what I like to do is do like a nice wet coat of this, rub it around, keep moving, keep flipping your rag, and then ultimately wipe it clean. Okay, nice. You can see how, how wet this stays compared to the acetone. So I get halfway, I'll flip it once again. I'm getting into them grooves, guys, into that molding, making sure I get right up in there in them corners because you know that, that wax will stay up in there. Now, unlike the acetone, if you pour this directly on the plastic, it's not gonna, it's not gonna try to etch it or anything like that. So this is your thing to see. Okay, I'm gonna wipe my hands down. You know, you're supposed to wear gloves, you're not supposed to get this on your hands. You like, there's a lot of things in life, guys, you're not supposed to do, I guess, but uh, when you're doing this kind of work, what, what are you gonna do, all right? So now, another one, contaminated. This one, boom, it's going over there. So I'm pretty confident that we got maybe 98, 99% of the wax off this surface right now. So now we're going to be able to come in and address the actual situation because this thing needs a lot of deburring and a lot of smoothing out. Um, it doesn't look like it's going to need any plastic work, but it's definitely going to need some blending and smoothing out. But this is the surface we're working with, okay? See, like stuff like this, this got to go, all right? A little rough. Uh, it's like that pretty much, you know here and there but as you run your hands on you feel it. I mean it's definitely there's nothing smooth about it okay so the whole thing's got to be sanded down there's casting flash all on these edges all right so we got to make sure we take care of that okay now that casting flash is really important guys especially on the inside where it's gonna mount all right uh, stuff like this got to fix that stuff like inside that corner right there got to get all that out of there all along the edge here all right and very important uh, right here in the middle because you're um, you know you have that metal bracket that goes inside here and that's what retains the bumper onto the car uh, right there you got to grind that out you got to grind all this out of here so that that bar lays flat this way it doesn't bow the uh, the outside of the bumper cover okay so we're gonna go we got a little work to do got some grinding work to do no big deal all right, we'll get it done. Little so roll lock wheel, 80 grit. No big deal, just get in there, grind away. All right, there's a little couple of tight corners, like especially right here. We get our paint stick, piece of DA paper, 180. I'm basically going to make a file, just like that, okay, so now we can get in here, all right, next up, DA 180, it's going to start raining, so I'm going to knock this out real quick. This guide coat's working out really well for me. And now you can really see what we're working with here. 
You know, like I said, it's not horrible. It does come out. Um, luckily, I mean, it's straight enough to the point where you really don't need any body filler. You just gotta, you just gotta sand all this stuff smooth. So, um, it's not, it's not terrible, guys. It's, it's all right. It's all right. You can see, you know, just this is all. You know, the, the mold has some imperfections in it. It's probably not super polished, and it's probably been used hundreds of times. So that's why you know we have this kind of stuff here going on. As you can see, like all the, this stuff got to go, but um, some nice heavy scratches there. That, all the all the primer will fill that. So we're just going to get all the high spots knocked down. And um, surprisingly, th this powder style um, guide coat's working out real nice. So we're just going to keep on going. See, that's why we use 180, guys, because we got to cut it, not just heat up the plastic and burn over it. We got to cut that that top layer down and get it nice and smooth, kind of like that. You see? It's a little bit of work, not an afternoon's work. But the more you do, the better it's going to come out. As you can see, the day has started to dwindle down. I'm with the block. And I'm going in all these little ridges and details. Blocking them all out nice and flat. I'm even blocking just how we would block primer. I'm blocking the plastic itself. Okay? So that's just been uh, part of this extravaganza. It's coming out well. I'm, I'm really happy that I went with the... Uh, the guide coat really made a big difference okay so we're gonna call this good for now and then we'll be back when it comes to the priming well guys just like everything else your prep job is your paint job. I've quoted that a million times throughout the series of these videos where we've been doing this Mustang re restoration. Um, so far, I've got approximately about 10 to 12 hours in the total prep of this bumper. So understand, um, this is not just a, you know, wipe the, grease, wipe the wax off, get it cleaned up, scuff pad it with a red scotch Bright, and send it with some primer, okay? It ain't, it ain't, it ain't like that, right? Um, if you do, it's going to look like total dog shit. You understand? So we've blocked this with 180, all right, completely. I mean, I took all the detail lines, all the body lines, all these reveals. Everything's blocked, smooth, rounded off. We started with the DA. We're in a soft lock, all right? We got it, we got it like pretty good, all right? Now, one good thing about this bumper is this. I really don't see any spots that need body filler after doing the blocking. So that's tremendous that that's happened. So we're, not, we're left with nothing but highs um, on, our, on our final product, and we've blocked them all straight. We're good to go, okay? So we're going to send it with some primer now. You know, you can use some innovative uh, technology here when you're mixing up your primer. It's a mixed top, just like you'd see on a mix station in your body shop. You can buy these, pop a drill on it, a little piece of tape. Mix your stuff up, all right? No big deal. I reached out to Nolan from the Auto Body Source, who's familiar with the product line that I've been using throughout the course of this restoration, all right? And I, I asked Nolan, I was like, hey, uh, you know, what what primer do you think it'd be best on these urethane bumpers that I'm working with, and uh, do I need a flex additive as well? Um, because I know that technology's been changing. And he, re he asked me, he said, well, you're using the DTM uh, 325, right? I said, yeah. yeah. He goes, uh, you know, let me double check uh, with, with tech over at Advantage directly, and I'll get back to you. And within five minutes, he got back to me, um, said the techs over there said, yeah, send it, no problem. Flex is not needed, even though this is a direct-to-metal primer, all right? It's going to work with the urethane, and you won't need the flex because it already has it. Fantastic. So what that does for me as, as a consumer and somebody that's, you know, doing this uh, smaller project compared to being in a big shop. I don't need to go out and buy a whole new product line 
just to paint these parts. So that works out really, really good. And this happens to be a fantastic primer. I mean, this, this primer is high build. You could use it as a low build, and you can also use it as a sealer, depending on how you mix it. So love the product. It's relatively affordable, not like some of the uh, bigger, bigger names. And so far, so good. I've been really happy with it. So, um, so that's the Advantage High Build Direct Metal Primer Filler Sealer, and we're using gray. Okay. It's two parts, so you need to activate this. We're going to pound some uh, a good amount of primer on this bumper. So um, I'm going to say... Let's go with, uh, let me find my 4 to 1 scale. I've gone over this stuff with you guys before. All right, we're going to do a nice, healthy uh, mix here. So 4 to 1 scale, we're going up to number 6. All right, we're going to hit it, even that out with the uh, hardener at number 6. Um, one thing I am going to do to spice this up a little bit, I'm going to add a drop of fisheye remover, okay? Yes to the primer, right? This is going to ensure us if we if we do have a little bit of a reaction somewhere, that's going to ensure that we try to subdue any fish eyes as possible. Just a little bit of insurance, guys. Now you can reduce this down, which I think I'm going to, just give it, you know, one little shot of reducer there. Um, on your mixing scale, it would be four, one to one. All right, so I'm gonna hit it with that little extra one. So that'll, that'll reduce the amount of texture that we're gonna get when we spray. Orange peel, all right? So this way, um, it's just gonna save us when we come to the, to the, block, the block sanding, okay? So let's see, it's hot as shit today. We're gonna go with uh, high Q 90 degree. Now we're gonna get into high Q guys in another video. We'll go over that as well, just a little shot. And we'll just make sure we mix them real good. There's no incubation time or anything like that with, with these types of products, guys. You mix it up and you go in there and you smack it on, all right? Some products require that, but uh, in this case, no, nah, none. Okay? Well, you wanna be clean about what you're doing. You know, even though we're not doing this in like a perfect environment, get some primer on this biatch. If it doesn't matter if you hit it with 600, 300, 220, 180, you know, the, the urethane, the nature of it, it just gets hairy when you put a, uh, when you sand it. So we'll see what it looks like after we, after we block it, we might have to shoot again the primer, but I think we may be, I don't know. I don't know guys. We'll see how it looks when I start touching on it. Cause I did hammer it. I mean, I, I smashed that primer on there pretty good. Uh, destroyed the phone in the process, but I got that cleaned up, I think. So, it's just like everything else, guys, right? Yeah. Got to, uh, got to take your time, do it right. There, there was no, there's, there's nothing quick about these things, all right? So, nice slow pace, all right? Th this part isn't the race, okay? 
after it's all together, I'm gonna go racing, we'll go racing. But this part, nah, it's not the race, all right? We're getting there, guys. Slowly but surely, this car is coming together. Um, I know it's been a lot of body work and painting and prep, stuff like that, but it's a big part of a build, you know? I mean, you guys were with me for the motor stuff, so motor's pretty much there, you know? It's all, it's runs, it drives, it's tuned. Um, we'll, we'll touch upon a little bit more tuning, maybe tweaking uh, at that point, but uh, I, I can't wait to take you guys along to, to do some like street driving and see how this thing comes to life. But uh, in the meantime, we got to pound away. We got to get the body work done. We got to fit up everything and finish this car, okay? So uh, thanks for watching this one, guys. We'll be back when it comes down to wrapping this thing up and then we can get it on the car, see how she looks. So at least the whole back end's done, all right? You guys hit that like button share do all that fun youtuber stuff that you guys do all right we'll catch you in the next one peace